Thank you. No, I didn't. I did, I did, I did not watch it. I'm, I'm too busy to watch it. It's a witch hunt. It's a hoax. I'm too busy to watch it. So uh, uh, I'm sure I'll get a report. There's nothing. There's, I have not been briefed, no. There's nothing there. I see they're using lawyers uh, that are television lawyers. They took some guys off television, you know. I'm not surprised to see it because Schiff can't do his own questions. Thank you very much, everybody. I sat here through the first 45 minutes and literally had an objection to almost the foundation of every question that Mr. Goldman asked regarding facts not in evidence, leading. But House Resolution 660 does not say that we we are under the federal rules of evidence. If it is your position that I should be asserting objections to questions that violate the federal rules of evidence, let me know now, because this hearing is going to change significantly. As I said, Mr. Radcliffe, I will allow the question. But from the president's perspective, if, if the ambassador, the Ukraine, Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, one of the most influential diplomats, um, is, is penning an op-ed, um, certainly with the OK of President Poroshenko, um, the, this, the DNC consultants are, are, are conferring with Ukrainian officials at the embassy. Uh, former Prime Minister Yatseniak is saying things on social media. Uh, Interior Minister Avakov, who has uh, spanned both the Poroshenko and the Zelensky uh, realm, is also saying some very unkind things on social media about the president. Um, you certainly can appreciate that President Trump was very concerned that some elements of the Ukrainian establishment were not in favor of him, did not support him, and were out to get him. If I go to, and I'll, I'll allow the question, but um, are you are asking, you really, are you, parliamentary inquiry, are you seriously interrupting our time no, here? I, I will allow the question. I won't, I won't dock this from the time. Um, I just want to be clear, Ambassador, if you're able to verify the things that counsel has asked you in the prerequisite of the question, that's fine. Otherwise, in questions from the majority or the minority that may assume facts not in evidence before you, uh, you should be cautioned about that. Mr. Chairman, point of order. The time is with uh, Mr. Uh, with Minority Counsel. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ratcliffe. Chairman, um, I sat here through the first 45 minutes and literally had an objection to almost the foundation of every question that Mr. Goldman asked regarding facts not in evidence, leading. But House Resolution 660 does not say that we, under, we are under the federal rules of evidence. If it is your position that I should be asserting objections to questions that violate the federal rules of evidence, let me know now, because this hearing is going to change significantly. As I said, Mr. Radcliffe, I will allow the question. I think the gentleman has a different question uh, about the rules. So what are the rules that are going to govern this? Does the ranking member seek recognition? I'm, I'm asking, I'm yielding you to, for a question, to a question I just asked you. For what purpose do you seek recognition? To answer Mr. Ratcliffe's question. I have answered it. You may no, resume your question. Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, um, you haven't answered my question whether or not I should be asserting assumes facts not in evidence or leading uh, objections to questions that are posed from this point forward. That's my question. Mr. Radcliffe, I'll say once again, I'm not objecting to the question, but I am instructing the witness that they should not presume questions from the majority or the minority that may represent facts not in evidence uh, are correct. Um, this is, I have, I have uh, answered the question. We will resume the questioning and resume the clock.